lesson is all about health literacy and why this matters for nurses. Now, this lesson probably falls into both nursing fundamentals as well as community and public health, but health literacy is something that applies to all aspects of nursing practice. So let's get into it. There are one, two, three, four, five learning goals for this lesson. Make sure you write these down or screenshot it so you can come back to this checklist and make sure that you've gotten everything out of this lesson that you need to. The learning goals are to define personal and organizational health literacy, explain how low health literacy impacts both individual patients as well as the healthcare system as a whole, describe the goal of the government's Healthy People Initiative as it relates to health literacy, talk about risk factors for low health literacy, and describe the nursing process as it's related to this topic. So health literacy can be divided into either personal or organizational health literacy. Now, this definition is from the CDC, and personal health literacy is the degree to which individuals have the ability to find, understand, and use information and services to inform health-related decisions and actions for themselves and others. What's new to this idea of health literacy is this idea of organizational health literacy. In other words, it's making sure that organizations, hospitals, and clinics are held accountable for making sure that the information they provide is easy to understand. So the C CDC defines organizational health literacy as the degree to which organizations equitably enable individuals to find, understand, and use information and services to inform health-related decisions and actions for themselves and others. So health literacy is thought of as on an individual patient level as well as an organizational level. And Houston, we have a problem. Why is health literacy getting such a spotlight right now? Well, according to the CDC, nine out of 10 adults struggle to understand and use health information um, when it's filled with complex wording, which lots of it is. And low health literacy leads to low adherence to treatment plans. And low adherence to treatment plans in increases the amount of hospital visits and costs to our healthcare system. In fact, improving health literacy is estimated to prevent 1 million hospital visits annually and save $25 billion a year. So making sure our patients have information that's understandable and they can use in their health journey is not only good for the individual, but for our society as a whole. Healthy People is an initiative from the government uh, under the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and their aim is for the health and well-being of all people in an equitable, thriving society. The, this Healthy People Initiative has been around since the 1970s, and new goals are generated every 10 years. And this Healthy People Initiative helps identify health priorities for people in America. And now, health literacy is one of the main foci of healthy people. And Healthy People focuses on health literacy in terms of the use of health information, not just understanding, making well-informed decisions, responsibility of healthcare organizations to address health literacy, and putting this emphasis on health literacy both for individuals and for public health. Risk factors for low health literacy. These are the things you should be tuned into as a nurse and if your patient has any of these conditions, recognize that they may have a harder time using and understanding the information you give to them. So you need to go above and beyond to make sure that they have it. Risk factors include things like advanced age, cognition problems, things with memory or learning disabilities, co uh, chronic conditions, which they might just be bombarded with so many different things to keep track of, it's hard to keep it all straight. Limited education, low income, and non-native English speakers are also risk factors for low health literacy. So when you're thinking about assessments related to health literacy, the first thing you should do is assess the resources you're providing. Do they have a low reading level? You can look at le reading levels online. You can just input all the data from the text from your brochure, and it'll tell you what the reading level of that uh, pamphlet is. So make sure your reading uh, level is at fifth grade or below. And then finally, assess your patient's individual health literacy level. And the AHRQ has assessment tools for health literacy, and I'll link those below if you want to look at them. 
Now, nursing interventions, how do we fix this? What's our job in helping with health literacy? Well, there's a couple things we can do. First, use plain non-medical language whenever possible. Speak slowly. Avoid fire hosing. Isn't that what nursing school feels like constantly is just fire hosing of information? Fire hosing means uh, just being slammed with so much information that it's hard to keep it all at once. Imagine like a fire hose out of a hydrant versus a little garden hose out of the side of a house. So we want to avoid fire hosing our patients with information. For the most important points that you're trying to share, make sure you repeat those. Be patient with your patients. Your patients are much less likely to ask questions or to tell you that they don't understand if they recognize that you are impatient or that you're pressed for time or that you're frustrated. So be patient and open and kind. Make sure you use flyers with low reading level. Consider educational videos. Sometimes videos are easier to understand because they don't require reading. And then finally, make sure you're evaluating the patient's understanding to make sure that they actually got what you wanted them to understand. So what does evaluation look like? Well, we can separate evaluation into immediate evaluation or long-term evaluation. Immediate evaluation are things like teach back, feedback, and return demonstration. Teach back is when there is nothing to, to show you, but you wanna make sure they understand the information. So if you're teaching on discharge instructions, after you finish, say, okay, now teach your discharge instructions back to me. Feedback is when we correct any wrong thinking. So as they're providing that teach back, you can tell them if there's areas that they need to have new understanding on or didn't quite get right. And return demonstration is if you are teaching them a skill that requires hands-on, like taking a blood pressure or using an inhaler. So those are good for immediate evaluation, but we also wanna look at longer term evaluation of patients. So how do we know long-term if a patient understood their education? We want to look at their health outcomes. So if they were here for a blood pressure check and their blood pressure is high and we gave them medications for their blood pressure and they bring back their blood pressure readings from the last month, are they improved? Uh, we can also look at medication compliance as a way of longer term evaluation. That's the quick and easy uh, video on health literacy. Remember, you are smart, you are capable, you are loved, and you got this. See you next time.